Hey, welcome back to learning the program using the Godot game programming engine. Okay, in this uh, short series, we're going to make a, a little r two player racing car game. And uh, I think it'll be fun to play with your friends and, and whatnot. And uh, so we're going to get started here real quick. I have a blank new project. And the only thing I've brought in is a few art pieces from uh, Kenny's Assets. So I've got a couple of road pieces, a barrier, and a couple of different color cars. And that's it. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with the, let's do the project settings. So I'm going to go into um, project settings. I'm going to drop down to display. And uh, I'm going to set this to um, 10, 24 by 7, 68, no, 720. Yeah, 1024 by 720. I think that's it. Uh, I'm also I'm going to leave the full screen off, and then down here I'm going to do 2D I believe, and we'll just keep say height. Uh, and this this will make it so I, if I stretch my game window once I start, it won't get all crazy on me. All right, so we're going to start with the car like I said. So we're going to create a 2D node, and I'm going to convert it to a kinematic body. And, and if you notice the interface is a little bit different, I'm using Godot 3.1 beta. Um, hopefully this will go full release soon, but the beta so far that I've seen has been pretty stable, so I'm just going to try it out. All right, so I'm going to rename this car, because this is going to be my one of my cars. I'm going to add two nodes. I need a um, sprite to display the car. I also need a collision sh uh, uh, shape. And so for the car, I'm going to pull in, it doesn't matter which car I need to pull in because both these cars are the same size. They're just different colors. So I'm going to pull that in, and on my collision shape, I'm going to set that to a rectangle and stretch out the shape to match the car. All right, so I'm going to save this, and since it's a small project, I'm just going to save it here in the root. and. So there is my car scene. All right, so I need to add a script to this. I'm going to select my top node there and click the plus sign. All this is fine by defaults. I'm just going to clear this out. Oops. And uh, <clears throat> so first I'm going to make the car turn left and right. So I'm going to use the uh, process function. Process delta and so what process delta does is it runs or process function does is it runs every frame so what I need to do here is detect whether or not you're pressing the left or right key so that we can rotate the car so I'm gonna go if input dot is key pressed key right and then if it is then I want to do rotation which is a property of uh, this kinematic body I'm going to say plus equals, which is the same thing as saying equals rotation plus, um, and then I'm going to use turn speed. So I need to define this turn speed. And I'm going to try 10. We'll see how that works out. So my error should go away. I'm going to rewrite this to plus equals because it's shorter. And then I'm going to copy this and do pretty much the same thing for left. So we'll change this to the left key and instead of adding it we're going to subtract it. So if you think about it clockwise is positive and negative is counterclockwise. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and try, well I need to put my car into a scene so let's go ahead and make a uh, level and we'll just rename this um, track one and we'll lock that node down so it doesn't change on us and we will save this scene just save it as track one and then I need to add my car to it so I can do that by just grabbing the car here dragging it into the scene and dropping it and so this area right here will be my play area so let's play that and we'll select the track one for the default scene and there's my car. Now if I press the right and left buttons, my car rotates. And it's rotating really fast, and that's because I forgot to do something. And that is, I want to multiply 
the turn speed by delta. That way, <clears throat> it'll one, it'll slow it down a little bit in this case, but it'll also uh, prevent different computers that run at different speeds from uh, behaving different. So if I had a really fast computer, my car would rotate faster than if I had a slow computer. And in this case, that's not what you want because then your game behavior would change. So there we go, that rotates at a lot more appropriate speed. And uh, so next we, ne we need to make the car be able to drive forward. So to do that, we're going to do very similar. We're going to do another if statement on the input and go is key pressed. And this time we're going to do key up. And so this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to um, get the speed. We can get the speed, so we're going to put that in a constant. Uh, I don't know what would work good here. We'll try that. And so we have the speed, but we need to, well, here, let's uh, go ahead and make the car move up. So I need the direction, uh, and we'll just call it velocity. And it's a of type vector two, so let's just wrap this up, and then what I'm going to use is the move on the kinematic body. There's a move, and and we've used move and slide in the past for a platformer game to move on the ground, but in this case I'm going to use move and collide. That way, if I hit a wall, I'll stop. And then all you need to do is pass this. If you look here, it's looking for the relative uh, vector, which is the direction you're going to move. So I'm just going to put that velocity in there. Now in this case, uh, vector 2 with, without any parameters is just 0, 0, so I wouldn't move at all. And so what I want to do here is add 0 for x. Now if you look at my picture, my car is facing upwards, and upwards is negative y. So what I'm going to do is for x, I'm going to do 0, and then for y, I'm going to do negative 1. Now this is a unit vector, which means the whole vector uh, moves exactly one unit. So if it was on a right angle, it'd be like 0 0.5, 0 0.5 would still be would be a unit vector. Well, actually, one would be a unit vector. One, one. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, the length of the vector is one. That's that's what we're looking for. And so what I can do here is multiply this by my well. I can, mul I, can I could multiply it here, but what I really want to do is multiply it here. So I'm going to multiply by speed and again just like above I also need to multiply by delta to make that consistent. Alright so let's give this a try and see what happens. So when I press, he moved really fast so this number is a little high and also let's give us a little bit more space to see this thing. Let's move that down there. Now when I push the up button I'm driving forward, but if I turn to the side and go up, I'm still driving up. And the reason for that is I need actually need to move in the direction that my car is rotated. So let's go ahead, and the reason I pulled this vector out is so I can do just that. So let's add uh, the, we'll use the function called rotated. And what that'll do is it'll take this vector and rotate it by this amount. So all I need to do is get the rotation that's the same rotation up here that we were modifying and pass that into this rotated function. Now when we move, I'll move forward in the direction that I'm facing. Alright, very good. So now we've got the uh, car, car moving around. Let's go ahead and draw our track. Now I'm pretty sure I did not get these dimensions like I wanted. What I really wanted was a uh, HD 720. Apologize for whatever my default background was there. So I'm looking for 10 or 1280 by 720. That's what I was looking for. So let's go to project, project settings, window 1280 by 720. There we go. So my screen's a little wider, and this is kind of more of a conventional. Um, aspect ratio for most screens. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a uh, tile map. And one of the really neat new features of <coughs> uh, Godot 3.1 is they have a built-in tile set editor. So what I can do instead of going and making a scene and then having to manually make my tiles, I can click new tile set here, click on it, and then click open an editor. 
and then I get this little tile set editor down here that I can create my tiles in. So I'm going to drill into my tiles, pick my two tile images. Now they're not tiles yet, I need to actually make them into tiles by clicking this new single tile button and I'm going to use this grid snap so that I can just quickly grab the image there. So I'm picking the whole image size and it adds a little buffer there. And this is so that if you had a large image that had both all of, all of your tiles in it, you could go ahead and just select what part um, was each each individual tile. So that's one tile. Now I'm going to click on this uh, other picture and then add and make that another tile. So there we go. I've got my two tiles. And I'm going to save that. And then I can move this down. And we'll go back out to my tile map and there's my two tiles. So I'm going to quickly make a small map here. Now what I want to do is ah, I need one other adjustment. So you notice here my that those orange outlines are exactly one quarter the size of my tiles and I can do really funky stuff there by um, overlaying my tiles because they're not set up correctly and that is the cell size and because it's I can tell it's one quarter the size that means my images are probably 128 by 128 and now they they line up appropriately alright so what I wanted to do I want a nice big fat track so I have plenty of room for two cars to drive side by side so I'm gonna put a uh, road there and I'm gonna rotate these and there's these little controls up here that let you rotate it and uh, from experience of playing with this I know that I need uh, five of these and then a curve and then turn it and I need two I'm gonna turn it and then do another one of those guys and then turn it one last time and there we go so this is the, si the sh size I want number of tiles now I'm gonna scale up my entire tile map just a little bit to like 1.2 maybe hmm so there's my boundary right there I think I can go a little bit bigger so let's try that and see if I can get that to squeeze in now I've got a big open space here on the left probably should have gone ahead and drawn on that so let's go ahead and modify this I know it's a little bit of a pain but I think it'll be worth it so twist those put those in put this right there twist right there I can get those two twist it again and one last time right there okay good now <laughs> I should have put them up here too oh my goodness all right. Apologize for the slowness. Hopefully, this will only take another second, and I'll be done. And so you may have to mess around with your tiles a little bit, and there we go. So now you can tell it's all inside the purple area. Uh, this purple outline. And so what I want to do is scooch it over to the right a little bit. Now, I haven't locked it down yet, so I should be able to just use my arrow keys with it selected and move it around. So I'm kind of roughly putting it in the center. I probably could also use... Nope, don't have the, the uh, snapping on this one. So there we go, that's about centered. So if I... Uh, also, my car is hidden, and the reason for that is it's underneath my tile set. So if I drag it and put the tile set tile map first and then the car, my car will then show up. So there we go. Alright, so now I've got my car and he can drive around on the track, but he can drive outside of the track too. So let's do one more thing and um, make it where he can't drive into the uh, drive outside of the road. So to do that, I'm going to use a collision polygon. And I don't know if we've used these in the past, but they're really nifty uh, tool in Godot because it allows you to draw with these little dots your collision shape. So you can get a much more refined 
collision shape than you would with a um, just a box or sphere. And so I'm going to draw a kind of a weird design. I'm going to come out here and then go back. And you're wondering what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is I'm you can't make a, uh, if I went all the way around the track, I would actually close in the inside of the track. And what I want to do is create uh, an empty space on the inside there. I made a collision shape on accident. So what I'm going to do instead is create two of these polygons that will overlap a little bit. See how I've got a little bit of overlap there? So I'm going to do the same thing that I did above again here on the bottom. And I'm not going to be super precise, but if you are doing this, you are welcome to be a little bit more careful with it. And uh, there we go. So now my entire outside is covered with a collision shape. And I'm going to quickly do an one last one for the inside. And you'll see what would have happened had I done that. To the entire track. There we go. So see how it enclosed the entire area inside of it? Alright, so now we've got our whole collision sh shape set up, but I've got errors here, and if I ran this I could still drive through those spaces. And the reason for that is we need to put these inside of a static body so that it becomes a physics shape and not just shapes. So I do that. Now all these are defining the shape of this static body. And now I will crash into them. All right. Great. Well, I think this is a good stopping point for the first video. Uh, we're able to race our little car around. We may shrink the car down a little bit so that he uh, has a little bit more space. We can do that by going to our car and do transform and scale. And instead of going to a pot, uh, number greater than one, we can go to something lower like 0.8. That'll shrink the car down just a little bit. And now we have a little bit more space to race so that if we have two cars, they'll be able to drive side by side. All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.